Tinker Hatfield is like a god for the Air Max One heads out here, like, and to meet him and him recognizing my brand and knowing about my brand and that, like, it was, it was just like a beautiful thing. <laughs> Basically, um, these are like I got the first appointment in the UK for the um, Beast Box. I kind of begged um, the Nike Lab guys to like, please, 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 because I got like a little information that it could be coming out here, and I was gonna go to New York and go and make my first one, but they said it's gonna come here. So I said, please, please, can I get the first like thingy and um, put my name down and when they released the obvious days when you could like make them they little chris and myself got summoned first so he made the first air force one i made the first air max one and um this is a kind of a mad story because in 2006 when i went to america like um 255 studio out there they kind of like had a bespoke program there for the air force one so I was kind of pissed, innit? Like, why are you doing this on an Air Force One, innit? Like, why don't you do it on an Air Max One? So since 06, I've been kind of waiting and waiting and went out there a few times, bought a load of kicks and still prayed and hoped that they would bring in this bespoke program onto an Air Max One. Finally, last year, they'd done it in America and it came over here towards the ending of last year. So yeah, getting in there was like emotional because it brought back a lot of memories of when my daughter was like not even thought of yet, you know, like they were in there, like she was possibly conceived in New York when I was out there. Do you know what I'm saying? Because she was born in 07 and I was killing it in New York 06. So I had to kind of like when I I went in there with a plan, obviously, like you, you, you always got a plan of what you want to make, but then I saw materials and you know, you just your mind is just blown away by what I saw in that. I kind of like wiped the slate clean and thought, nah, I gotta do this one, like do a crazy one. And then I was panicking, thinking that they're, they're, this, it's not real, is it? Like they're not gonna like open for too long. It's just gonna be a touch thing. It ain't gonna work, and they're gonna close up store. No more beast box over here. So I thought, let me just go crazy, in it. So yeah, it's inspired by my daughter's first um, first birthday, like Regent Park Zoo, and celebrations and stuff. So yeah, this is like pinnacle in my collection. I would have to say this is my number one shoe right about now, isn't it? Like, because of what it represents. You hear me? My little princess, Bella Amaya. If you're watching, baby, it's for you. And this is for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And obviously, I come from Jamaica. So I'm a yardie. The two front um, colorways, my favorite two color Air Max ones, the red, the OG red, OG blue. Now, obviously we normally have mesh on top. So I thought, you know what, let me spin it and put the mesh on the mud guard. So on the mud guard, you got mesh, you know what I'm saying? And on the top, you got suede. So I kind of just mixed up the stitching around there to kind of like make it look like they're a pair. And um, come to, the side is like, obviously you got the animal to refer to the zoo. You got the Liberty print, represents the court system for any dads fighting to see their kids. That's what that represents there, straight. And um, the toys, colors of her toys is the blue, the, like the pink. The blue represents the aqua of like the aquarium. When was it the aquarium? I got pictures to show for that. Um, on this side is like, the snake is obviously, people that know me know what the snake's all about. But, um, you got the cork for celebration. <laughs> you got some nice cashmere in there. That's that classy cashmere, my favorite kind of like safari. Yeah, it's kind of like zoological, isn't it? Glow in the dark souls. But that's it. Yeah, this one is just like the original shoe. It used to have this big bubble back in the day, innit? But obviously, bubble burst, sent back to the shop to wait for something else to come out or get something else. And, um. What year is that one? 05, Powerwall again. 
so bringing this, I brought this with me to um, to meet Tinker as well. So I got him to sign it. He signed. Um, obviously, I made a T-shirt for him and a T-shirt for myself, which is the OG colorways. And um, I got him to sign the two T-shirts to go with the two OG blue and the OG red, and also the shoe to go with it. And pre presented him with one of each of the tees as well. So for me, it's like. I never worn this shoe since I got it in 05, so I undiest it over in Oregon and got him to sign it. So yeah, being my favourite shoe and getting <laughs> the, the man who designed it to sign it, it's like my god man, it's like whoa, I'm like I'm like blown away, yo. So yeah, I'm happy with that. And I will never wear it. This is the only time I'll probably wear it. It's got little war wounds and everything from the little day out and that. But um, yeah, this will be going in a cabinet with the t-shirt and will be on display straight in my crib. Tinker, Hatfield. <laughs> Legend. I have, I, have, I have one quick question as well. One, one very good question. Storage, how do you store your traders to avoid a lot, like, a lot of crumbling? Like crumbling and that. You have to store them in like a room which is like not too cold and not too hot. Do you know what I'm saying? If you've got extreme temperatures and you've got like your house is cold or something, it's just best to not even really try and store them like that because it's going to dry the glue out. If it's too hot, it's going to like melt it. So you've got to have, kind of have it room temperature. I don't leave my shit in my house, so it's like storage. they got room temperature control rooms that you can keep your stuff in. You could, there's other stuff you can wrap it in like um, plastic and shrink wrap it. But, you know, there's nothing you can really do but wear your shoes or display it. You just got to know what you're doing with your shoes. If you're out here to collect, to just collect, then yeah, do your thing in it. But look after them as well and store them properly. It don't make sense having them all out on display. It's like display, I kind of like, I'd love to have my stuff displayed out, but I know that the light kills and makes your, like the mesh yellow and, like one foot will be different colour from the other. Like my boy in Amsterdam, he's got his stuff out on display and each one of his shoes is, is, is ruined because it's just been out on display for so long. So yeah, I prefer mine in the boxes and away from me. And then I just go to the storage and then grab what I'm getting and then I rock that month for the month or, and just rotate it. But yeah, special occasions I would undress some certain shoes. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's me.